And so the standard answer is, well, there's different atmospheric conditions. But then we found that one jet would lay a short contrail, another jet right behind it would be leaving one that turned into a huge plume, another one would leave white haze. So we're saying it can't be just atmospheric conditions, there has to be something else going on. Then we saw X's and stop and goes, where a plume would, a jet like this would leave a plume and then all of a sudden it would stop. We saw spray apparatuses where there was a wingtip to wingtip um, spraying, so that you could see that there was spray coming off the entire length of the wing, stop for a while, then start again, stop for a while, start again. So all of these things were going on and we're saying this isn't just normal, something that we've seen since 1919 before we even had the equipment and no jet engines. So when NASA says they've seen contrails, for example, since 1919, not from jet engines because they weren't in existence. Many times um, in recent years we have seen this, this configuration, uh, this aurora type configuration here. However, when you go back into recorded history, people have been taking pictures for a long time. People have been addressing this issue for a long time. And there would have been pictures somewhere, somewhere in the 60s and in the 50s. Someone would have been taking these kind of pictures, looking at these type of clouds, seeing these configurations. And so that's why this is a new phenomenon. And this is something we have to address because it's impacting agriculture and the amount of sunlight reaching the earth as these expand. So we know that they're having a certain problem. So we have to get our elected officials to begin to address these issues of how they're impacting our environment and are we going to allow this to continue? And that's another issue here to be dealt with somewhere down the road. But this is why I'm bringing all of this to attention. Now the other thing is up in these pictures up here, um, a lot of pictures, uh, we have white haze. And we never had white haze here. We had clear, deep blue skies. We could see the stars. Now we have studies showing that telescopes are going to be worthless because we're either going to have the white haze or we're going to have these man-made clouds. You won't be able to see the stars, which we can't a lot at night, because we've got all of this cloud cover and white haze going on. But a lot of times the jets will quit spraying here if they say there's some celestial event going on or there's going to be some sort of uh, fireworks or an air show. All of a sudden, how come we have blue skies? Um, jets aren't leaving contrails anymore just because there's an air show or because some event is taking place. So sometimes we have no jets and our skies start to go back to blue and the white haze begins to dissipate. But then the minute that they start again, then we go back into having our skies look like this. That leads us to questions on why rickets is on the rise, where children now in the United States are suffering from rickets, according to the CDC, University of California at Berkeley, Kaiser Permanente Hospital, are all studying an increase in rickets. Why are we having rickets? Well, when it's the turn of the century and when children worked in coal mines in the United States, those children suffered with this bone disease called rickets. Now it's on the rise in the United States and could it be that we're having so much cloud cover from, the, from these persistent jet contrails that turn into man-made clouds and haze that we're getting less sunlight and therefore we're not getting enough vitamin D and we're getting cases of rickets. No one is looking at this subject with regard to when they're studying rickets. When I look at their studies, they're studying a lot of other things, but they're not studying what's happening in our skies to determine if this is one of the causes, and this is something that should be addressed. What we see from the ground is we'll see a plume and then it expands. And the satellite pictures do show, and, and I have a lot of them, other people have a lot of them, we've seen them, do show the contrails and they show the cross hatching. They show that they're expanding. You can watch them over time on satellite pictures and you can see as their slights going around um, over certain areas that they expand. So we can see them. So um, they can see them from space, they can see them from the ground. So that there's no secret here about who's flying the jets. The FAA keeps records, Homeland Security keeps records, everybody keeps records, who's leaving the contrails, where they take, where these planes take off from because they have to fly, uh, file flight paths, and they can see them and they can follow them at the National Weather Service to see how the plume expands. 
So this is not a secret. So the satellite pictures are very revealing and they're very good with looking at this, this type of phenomenon. Global dimming just means that the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth is beginning to be reduced by cloud cover, by haze, by pollutants. So the studies have been going on for quite some time now showing that the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth is being reduced. Now, the, the catch-22 here is, if we're already reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth, then when the geoengineering community says, we need to put particulates up and we need to put other things in the atmosphere to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth, we are already subjecting ourselves to global dimming from some of our activities and the jets. So wouldn't this cause a real, a, a worse problem because we're not cooling down, technically, um, because we're in a global, global dimming cycle, which is getting the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth is getting less and less. So I have some questions about global dimming and also about scientists putting more things in the air to stop sunlight reaching the Earth because if you don't have the sunlight, then you don't have crop production as well. So human health decline, um, you know, mentally, depression, all kinds of things can happen because we obscure the sunlight from reaching the Earth. Weather modification means that someone puts a chemical or, par or particulate something into the air to seed clouds to get them to rain out or to snow in areas where they may not rain out or snow if left on the normal weather cycles. So weather modification can, is, is done throughout the United States. Um, anyone can modify the weather at any time without any congressional oversight, no state oversight, for the most part, except for Texas has, has, a, has a, uh, an advisory body. But people can go and modify the weather. They may or may not have to report to the federal government, um, NOAA, and if they have to report to NOAA, NOAA can probably waive any requirements for reporting, and that's why we think that we don't see a lot of ongoing weather modification reported in the eastern part of the United States, is because they may be waiving the requirement. We're not sure about this but that's another level of investigation. However, um, documents that I obtained from NOAA, that all public record, anyone can obtain them, show that there's over 60 ongoing weather modification programs in um, the states that are marked in yellow. Now, I designed this because of NOAA documents and um, documents from Canada and documents from weather modification companies who were openly talking about doing weather modifications in other countries. So the yellow part of this section is all ongoing weather modification programs. We're using, they can use rockets, small planes, large planes, they can use any method to um, ground-based applications, sending shooting things into the air, all these can be used in weather modification com by companies or states or cities, private companies, private individuals, anyone can modify your weather. Now, they don't need public consent, public permission. They can use any chemical that they choose, experimental or silver iodide, which has been around for a long time. And so all of these programs are ongoing. One weather modification can modify 184,000 square miles at one time, and that's bigger than the square miles of the state of California here. Um, California is only 164,000 square miles, and yet one state is modifying 184,000 square miles. Of, uh, that's bigger than uh, Idaho is modifying only has 63,000 square miles, but they can modify 184,000 square miles. So the range that they're modifying is into other states over other areas. Now, you can have rain enhancement, snow enhancement, uh, you can have hail suppression, they can dissipate fog, all kinds of programs are going on, but most of it is involved in putting rainfall or snow more of it or into areas where it doesn't usually get very much. 